Hola amigos, today I have a short material tip about a new feature available in Unreal 5.3. Since I have been uploading some of my free materials, which you can see here, and all include a height map, I thought that it was a good idea to show how much of a difference this new feature makes and how to use it. Let's check some examples. Here I have three spheres, one, two, and three, which I applied this metal deposit material. And if you look at it from close, maybe something like this, and especially from the front, or if I had dynamic lights to show the effect of the normals, this could pass for a rock. However, the mesh is so simple, and we can see the wireframe here, that there is not a lot of detail, especially when you look at it from the side, you can, we can see every single triangle. Now, let's see what happens if I apply displacement and tessellation to these rocks. Now everything becomes much more interesting looking and I can get pretty close to these rocks now that they could work as a, as convincing, convincing even like ground texture. It doesn't even to be a, have a, to be a prop, right? And let's check other materials. Now, here we have this gilded ceiling, and if I disable this uh, tessellation and displacement, now it's still pretty cool, and maybe if I had a light to uh, increase the contrast, uh, it would look even better, but now when I enable tessellation, we can see even self-shadowing from all these recesses on the, on the object, and we can even get this close to it. And yeah, it looks a lot better, right? A lot more interesting. Here I have piles of gold, and I think it's really cool to look at them from here, especially if I had a more orange light, like torches or something like that. And it's really cool to see the reflections on each one of the coins and the little mesh on each single one and here we can I'm going to illustrate uh, using this one to illustrate one of the limitations of this right now when I'm you if I'm using nanite and displacement and tessellation well the tessellation is not applied or the opacity is not applied to the tessellated mesh it's applied to the original one so you can you might have <laughs> noticed this triangle if I show the wireframe, we can see that it corresponds to this triangle on the original mesh. So, but if I disable tessellation, now we, the opacity maps get, or the opacity map gets applied correctly. We can even get inside and see all this beautiful self-shadowing from this part. Now, let me re-enable this again. I think this one is really cool when look from Penumbra or like in the darkness and you can see some of the reflections and the goopiness, but also the mysterious glow of this alien stuff. And again, with displacement, you can get pretty close and see almost each individual blob. I have here some reptile scales or something like that and yeah when look from the side the effect of the displacement is a much much more apparent and finally i have a computer board here i show this material in a different tutorial and this is with displacement and this is without it and yeah it could work from a distance and not be bad that again becomes alive when we add this feature we can even get really close to this one again uh, we have this uh, camera near problem but that will be a different different issue but we can even see the little indentations from each pin connector and even the little resistors are casting their own shadow again this makes 
this material become becomes much more interesting after doing this. Now enabling, you might have seen this command that I'm using here. Uh, it's not completely straightforward and we'll have to do one step before this works. But before that, let me explain why tessellation and nanite and being able to combine this is a big a bit of a big deal, at least for someone like me. And if you want to skip this part of the explanation and want to go straight ahead to the point where I just explain how to do it, feel free to skip ahead to the mark shown in the video right now. Since Unreal 5 came out, the engine uses this technology called Nanite, which is a geometry virtualization technique that I won't go into the details, but basically allows us to display a ton of triangles on the screen. As many as one triangle per pixel. And that's an incredibly large amount of detail. Here I have an example that I downloaded from Quixel Bridge, and this is a set of stone stairs that are 3D scanned from somewhere in real world. Now I can get extremely close to this and we can see every little bump and a speckle from the rocks and this debris, these leaves and everything is modeled, even the little moss or whatever is a little rough here and this looks great and I'm apologizing in advance to the YouTube compression algorithm for this but we can show the triangles and see that all oh, each one of these colors represents a different triangle so we have a ton of detail now this uh, like i said this is a sorry my capture card is also having a, a little bit of a problem here we are now as i said um this is a set of stairs that i downloaded and someone scanned from the wall and this is great, but there are many cases where I might not have access to meshes with, with this amount of detail. Uh, maybe I'm working with a ton of props that are mysterious or strange or alien, and I cannot just go and 3D scan a spaceship, for example. If I had a props department, maybe I could get them to model that in clay and then 3D scan that, but that takes a lot of time and maybe I don't have the capacity or my studio doesn't have the capacity. Another reason could be that maybe my 3D artists are also full capacity and they cannot model uh, things with this amount of detail. Or like is my case, maybe the 3D artistry is really poor and I can only make spheres and cubes, right? And that's where materials come in to at least take some of the weight of adding more mesh detail. And those come in two flavors. We have normal maps and we have displacement maps. Let's see the difference between both. This is a normal map. Normal maps gives us a three-dimensional vector that tells us the surface direction or the direction that the surface is pointing towards. In this case, the red, green, and blue components represent the X, Y, and Z uh, components of that vector. So if we take a look at the red component, it tells us if the surface is pointing towards the right or towards the left by having values closer to 1 or closer to 0. If we took a, take a look at the green channel, it's the same but for the vertical component. And maybe it's easier to visualize it if you think of this as being illuminated from the top or being illuminated from the side or in the case of the blue component being illuminated from the front. And when we combine all three that gives us our classic normal map that is that has this bluish almost purple tone with red yellow green or cy green cyan and dark blue colors depending on the direction the surface is pointing towards and 
it's more or less easy to visualize or to have a good intuition of the contour of this material just by looking at the normal map. And this is how it works. Let me change the color. So these red X's are vertices in our surface. And the red lines are edges. When we want to paint a pixel from our model, let's say we want to render oh, that pixel, well, our normal map when, when we render it, it's telling us, hey, pretend that the surface is like this. So when the light strikes it, now if we think of all those little vectors, now our normal, or without our normal, they would go all be pointing like that. But now with our normal, we have ones pointing like this, one point like that, and so on. And we fake all this cool amount of detail, but just telling the light, hey, behave as is, as if this pixel was oriented like that. And that's really cool, but we are still limited to the surface that is covered by the actual triangles of the object. This pixel here doesn't belong to the object, so it's not rendered with the same material properties, right? Now, height maps are slightly different. And let me swap here this so this is a height map, and it's telling us, write that, the height of those pixels. So if you think of this as zero, as the ground, these pixels that are almost wide are the closest to the camera, and then everything in between. And similarly to the normal map, just by looking at this image, you can, you can get a pretty good estimation of what the material shape looks like. Now, this behaves slightly different. Let me go back to my green color, and this will take the normal of that vertex, which is the average of, the, of those other two normals. Here will be like that, and this one will be like this. And then applying a different amount of displacement will move that vertex a different amount based on this texture. So let's say that, for example, we take this mesh and apply a displacement that puts one there, let's say puts one there, and then puts one there, and one there. So our mesh that was originally like this, now it's rendered, oh, sorry, it's rendered like that. And that's pretty cool, we can even combine that with the normal and add that extra layer of pretend detail on top. However, this is still limited by how many vertices we have in our original mesh. In this case I have four, so we can only do that much with four. Now we can always ask our artists to create meshes with a ton of detail, but that would be pretty expensive. And that's where tessellation comes in. Tessellation is basically another way to say subdivision. So we can add more detail, but only where we need it. And if your tessellation algorithm is smart enough, it will take an, uh, into account camera position and distance, texture detail, and all uh, everything else. So let's say that we still have our mesh here, and our camera is pointing let's say to this point here in the middle, and our texture has a lot of detail in this area, and then a little bit of detail here, and barely no detail there. Now our algorithm, algorithm should be smart enough to say, hey, the camera is pointed here, and we need a ton of detail here, so let's add a lot of tiny, tiny faces around, and lots of vertices. And the farther we get from this point, eh, just add less. And combine that with knowing how detailed the texture is at those areas, and then factor that in. So maybe here we add something like this, five, and here we just add two. And now when we apply the same displacement that we had earlier, right, with all the different normals, we have 
a lot of extra detail to work with. So we could create something like this. And as you can see, it adds the detail only where we need it. And on top of that, we could combine the normal to have that extra layer of micro detail. And that's what I was doing with those materials that I showed earlier. So let's go back to the engine now and see how it's done. Here we are back in Unreal and let's enable that option in our project settings. So we can search for tessellation and there's nothing and maybe try displacement and there's nothing. And the reason is because these are still experimental features. So they need to be enabled by the by console commands. However, if we want to use that in our project, we can go to our project configuration folder. So this is the root folder of my project. I can go to the config subfolder and there's four files here. You might have more in your case, but you will have at least these four. And the one that we want to edit is the default engine.ini. Now, there is a ton of text here and your file might be slightly different than mine, but here in the renderer settings, we need to add two new lines. The first one is r.nanite.allowTessellation Tessellation is spelled with two S's and two L's equals one. And then the second one is r.nanite.tessellation equals one. Now, once we do that and save the file and restart the engine, we can start using all these new features. Let's now create a new material that uses displacement so we can test this. Right click on the content browser and I'm going to call this one panel box. Now we can open it and immediately we see that we have a new output that says displacement. Perfect, that's all we needed. Now we just need to find our textures. I have my panel box textures here. I can select all of them and drag them as a group. And now I just need to find in each one and connect it to its corresponding output. So this is roughness goes here, normal goes there, metallic goes there, what is this, ambient occlusion goes there, and we can organize this a little bit also to match the order of the outputs, so base color, metallic, roughness, then we have emissive here, normal, in occlusion and here we have the height map which goes to displacement and cool but our sphere has the material but it's still no displacement and if you look at it from a grazing angle it's still perfectly smooth now we can go to our material properties scroll down a little bit and find these two options magnitude and centering the first one, magnitude, is the amount of displacement that will be applied. So let's crank this up and set it to 50 or maybe more, maybe like 75. And nothing happens. The second one, center, tells the engine what's the center point of our height range. In my case, because I make these materials in Substance Designer, my textures go from 0 to 1, so the height point is 0.5. Some other software might output height maps that go from minus one to one, in which case the center point would be zero. But still, that doesn't solve the problem, which is that still nothing is happening. We can still hit apply and save and try out in the viewport and see if there's any difference. So go here, drag our panel box material, and wait a second. It seems to be working here fine. So it's just on the editor preview. You see, the sphere that is used by default on the material preview isn't, doesn't have nanite support enabled by default. Now let me create a few copies of this so we can see it better.
move in a little bit and try to make like a corner and check the grid snap yeah I mean you would need to round these corners in order to make this work with the displacement so yes a flat plane is not gonna help it's not gonna work pretty well like you miss, you're missing this here but anyway the displacement does a pretty convincing effect of adding detail here we have these recesses for these lights and this handle here and they even get their own shell shadowing so we can see a little bit more of that emission here which is really cool this vent here has these cool gaps every nut and bolt seems to be modeled into this geometry and remember this is still just a plane so in terms of model detail, this is pretty cool now, and it just has one one set of textures. We can even see that the metal that has been corroded is a little bit thinner than the rest. So I think that's pretty cool. And at this point, some of you might be yelling at the screen saying, Hey, stop talking about how cool your material looks. It's not working for me. And that's the same reason why it wasn't working on the editor preview. And it's because... These, these basic shapes by default don't have nanite support enabled but fixing it is as simple as selecting any of these meshes and select a static mesh component double click and we can see the mesh as it was imported now we just need to enable nanite support and once you change that option you can click on the apply changes button do that save close and your material should be working. And that's all I had for you today. I will include links to download the textures in this metal panel material in the description of the video below. But remember that you can find links to download this one and some other materials from this gallery in other videos from my channel. And if you like this content and want to see more like this, please consider giving a like and hitting that notification button. It helps a lot with the channel visibility. See you next time!